Influence is big business. Instagrammers, YouTubers and TikTokers are now considered an essential part of the marketing mix. But now, some marketers want to take the human out of the equation and create so-called virtual influencers. They behave just like regular influencers. They share selfies, they monologue to camera, they create sponsored content. But their images are computer generated and their words are pre-programmed. To find out more, we've come to the Virtual Influencer Agency in London, where they've created a virtual influencer just for us. The idea was to create something for the drum which demonstrated um, how this actually works. So we together chose a subject which was environmentalism and then we analysed about half a million conversations around environmentalism and then analysed different tribes and types of individuals, so both their psychographics, what they're interested in, and from that came up with a personality and a narrative and a story which is effectively flow. So if you're making it for a brand, then what you focus on is who is the individuals or the type of people that as a brand you want to communicate with. So we find those individuals by doing machine learning analysis. So what we will do is find the types of individuals, understand their age, their psychographics, their demographics. Then we'll do some machine learning analysis which, which will go out there and will feed back to us what it is that they're interested in, what kind of content they like, what kind of imagery they like, and then we will use that to inform the type of personality which we will create. Now that personality includes how they look, um, what their age is, what their background is, what their interests are, and also importantly, how they speak. What's up guys, it's Lil Michaela. Thanks so much for stopping by and hanging out with us. For Floresta specifically, what we'll be doing is doing processing of the conversation and delivering a far more complicated narrative, which is built in a modular fashion against the personality briefs. So right now, you may well find that if you're talking to a smart speaker, uh, or if you're talking to a chatbot on a website, um, then you'd be coming to the output of some simple natural language processing, which is where we are right now. The key idea to understand about a virtual influencer is that they're a computer-generated image. They look like a human, but actually they are generated by a machine, by us, and they are crafted in a way to appeal to a particular kind of audience and deliver a particular kind of message. Now, we want that computer-generated image to have a real relationship with real people, but we also want people to understand that this is a computer-generated image. So it's partly entertainment, so suspending disbelief. So when you watch a film, you know it's not true, but you cry when your character gets hurt. That's kind of like that. It's part entertainment, but it's a way for brands to control the content and control the conversation and communicate the messages they want, but have an emotional relationship with their audience. So when we're creating a virtual influencer image, uh, we go through quite a long process of development, uh, which starts with understanding the audience and the type of BI that would appeal to them. And then the creator starts to build that character. We then use a number of plugins to develop head, colour, eyes, uh, features, um, and gradually that character takes shape and takes uh, a form and it's very much about building that aesthetic and her sort of views and beliefs particularly around these sort of environmental issues meant that we wanted someone that resonated with the audience so as we built her we kind of were very aware of that it had a sort of natural feel um, and that shaped our decisions around the aesthetic and uh, developing her character. So I guess when we're placing flow into the environment, what's really important is how those two parts come together. Uh, the imagery in the background and how flow is positioned within it um, is really important that that feels integral and to the, to the actual image that is posted. So we do get the ability through the nature of the design to put those two things together. But when we're doing that, we're using maybe traditional creative techniques to make sure we're bringing those two parts together and it looks like a real image. So there are four key reasons why you would choose a virtual influencer. Firstly, you have what we call product life cycle integrated with the life cycle of the influencer. 
So the influencer's narrative and their life story can have the product inserted into each part of their story in a compelling way, which is almost impossible to do with a real world individual. The second one is volume of conversation. So by automating communication, it enables us to allow the virtual influencer to have hundreds of conversations with consumers at the same time. The third one is less risk. So you are in control of all of your content, so you know what's going to go out. So that means that you don't have to, as a brand, worry in any way at all that any of that content or any of that messaging is gonna be wrong. It's all gonna be done as you want. The fourth reason is money. So effectively, when you're paying a traditional influencer, once you've paid them, that's it. And often you're not getting followers. You're paying that influencer and they are talking about your brand to their followers. When you are conducting a campaign with a virtual influencer, and you're putting and investing money into them, every new follower you get is your follower. So your money is getting a better return on investment as you grow your audience on behalf of your brand.